just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Judgment and delay, but only hurting me and I and myself. Hi, everybody. It's Calico, and here's another delightful episode of Beyond the Body. And today I'm really excited because um, one of the things about living in community is that I'm amazed at the number of young people that are actually stepping into the principles of A Course in Miracles and living them. Um, I studied the book for 20 years in a room with a bunch of other gray-haired people. Well, some weren't gray-haired, but they weren't being honest about it either. But the reality is we were all just studying the book. And there seems to be a huge shift that's happening right now. And there are young people coming up the ranks. I call them all millennials. Anyone that d wasn't alive when John Lennon was, you're a millennial. So the community here has all these millennials coming in and the energy is profound. And so um, I wanted to introduce Andre as one of our millennials here in the, uh, uh, the community. And uh, maybe you can just set up how this whole program came about and when I uh, approached you about doing it. Right. So I'm almost a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have a millennial mindset. You, you guys you are saying that I have a millennial mindset. <clears throat> um, well, we're, we're in the community, we're using this tool. It's called Basecamp that kind of like helps us to, to realign with where we are, where is my mind, that kind of thing. Uh, am I aligning with spirit? Am I aligning with the ego? Um, and we're getting it every day at the end of the day just to, just to realign, right? So it sounds kind of like this. What are you doing this week to align with the spirit instead of the character? And that was a question that we get periodically. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So my answer was to stop trying to figure out the ACIM puzzle. Yeah. Right. And you found that uh, inspiring and... Yeah, well, it landed, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like, yes, ACIM does appear as a puzzle. And I know right. we talked about this the other day. For me, I mean, I don't even know how many times I've read the text. Mm. And, you know, in book study, you finish the last page, and then the next book study meeting, right. you start on chapter one again. Mm -hmm. And it was, there was always something like, what am I missing? I'm, that must have been in chapter seven, that I missed <laughs> something that was critical for me to be joyous sure. all the time. Sure. And so when you left that message, it was like, you know, you're a young person that's coming yeah. into this community <clears throat> and you're letting go of, you know, 20 years of my book study. Mm. You know, what am I missing? And so, yeah, I mean, what was in your mind when you, when you wrote that answer, you know, that you wanted mm. to let go of the <clears throat> ACIM puzzle? Right. Well, um, I've always loved learning. So I'm kind of like a compulsive learner um, in the process of learning. And the process of learning is kind of like trying to figure out puzzles. I mean, it's right, you want to do something and then you break it apart in parts and then you get every part and you learn it. And so it's a very rewarding activity for me, right? That's that burst of, uh -huh, that's how it goes, that's how it works. It's kind of like figuring out a mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, but then it usually turns into pain <laughs> at some point. <laughs> And that's when I kind of like have to make a decision. Okay, this was fun so far. Um, it's nice trying to figure it out. It got me so far, but now that actually it's actually yeah. hurting me, right? Yeah. So. Did you find yourself joyous for no apparent reason while you were working on the <coughs> puzzle part? Absolutely, I love it. Yes. And did it did it last? For a while. <laughs> <laughs> and there is giving up that puzzle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, giving up the toys, as you said yeah. at some point, like yeah. putting the toys aside. And they got me here, it was a fun ride, 
but I guess it's time to 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 to, to move on. And one thing that a learner does is also have been like a like a, um, um, a human nature study. I've, I've studied human nature. I've always was inward and watching people rather than communicating. So I've always watched patterns and stuff like that. So I can spot patterns where where people are kind of like doing it wrong without for, for a better use of words right and um, the pattern that still that comes up for me a lot is that trying to figure out everybody's trying to figure it out especially in the community when we do the expression sessions it's kind of like a pattern that emerges every time like okay i have to figure it out and then after i'm gonna get it mm -hmm. then i'm gonna be happy <laughs> so that's pretty obvious to me like am i actually doing that as well well yes i am <laughs> So. It's one mind. We're yeah. doing all yes. of it all the time. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So, and then the decision. I mean, do I want to be happy or do I want, I mean, it's because it sucks to give, give that up. Yeah. I really love learning and I really love the process of learning. But <clears throat> if that's going to make me unhappy, then no more. No, thank you. Let me ask you this. So, <clears throat> when you type that answer, mm -hmm. you're willing to give up the ACIM puzzle. Yeah. Did anything open up out of that? I'm just curious. We haven't talked about this. So, um, yes. did something open up out of being willing to give that up? Yes. Great. Yes. It's kind of like how you feel when you're going to a new adventure. <clears throat> you're excited and scared at the same time. So that's kind of how it, it goes for me. I'm like, kind of like, I know that a new chapter has opened, but at the same time, I'm scared of what's going to be in it, kind of, kind of thing. So it's kind of like a mixture about excitement. Yeah. What, what's next? What new toys would the spirit give me, right? And have you been given <clears throat> any new toys? Yes. Um, one is thinking is optional. <laughs> But I that's just that. a cute idea so far. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> haven't, haven't you're a gotta, perpetual learner. This right. could be difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like you got to think to yeah. to function in the world. Otherwise, you're just gonna be right uh, like a, like a lobotomized yeah. something. Um, and yeah, I'm going towards that one, trying to 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 not think and just be, which is very counterintuitive and weird and out of my pattern. So what comes up when you have a thought, you know, say a judgmental thought comes in, because they, mm -hmm. they do, sure. you know, and you see someone, you've already said you're a studier of, of mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. um, and you see something that perhaps, it doesn't look like it's working for someone, they're not right. really happy. Right. How does this help you shift your thinking? Well... Does it? It may not. It does, and I sometimes feel guilty about it. So, for example, the fast learners, the the biggest kind of like tool in their in their belt is, um, um, again, spotting patterns in, in other people. So, what are others doing wrong? That's why they're avid readers, right? Because they're trying to to avoid steps that others have made. Right, right. And no skipping steps. Right. Well. <laughs> I know, but that's not in the quick learner's book. Right. It's not in the right. quick learner just wants to hack everything and just wants to avoid every step that other people have made and just get to the to the cookies <laughs> right ahead. Right. Which I'm learning that mm, you can't do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very tempting, but yeah. So I have I'm having to undo that that hacking mindset. Right, so uh -huh, I'm gonna watch them. So that, so she's doing that wrong, and I'm going but I'm gonna not do it. Hacking yeah. mindset, I love yeah. that term. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, there's no hacking mindset on this. No, and it has served me very well in <laughs> life, <laughs> but not here. No. Yeah. No, not not. No. <laughs> well, you know, what we're doing here is radical. And I've yeah. said this so many times. This is the most radical thing I have ever done in my life. And yes. I have done radical drugs. I have done yes. radical programs. Yes. Nothing has compared to this. And it really no. is. It's an internal journey yeah. in a community of other people that are reflecting constantly this one mindset. And sometimes yeah. it's fearful, sometimes it's joyous, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, I've got to address it in my own head. Yes. So I may see it out there, it's like, ooh, they're moping again, or they're grumpy again. Right. But it's like, who's the one that's projecting the grumpy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's powerful stuff. So that's where you can't hack. No. You can't bypass that. You can't, no, no, no. Uh, again, it's tempting. 
but right. no. And I've tried it, but it didn't help me. But every time I take it back to myself, it releases. That's beautiful. And that is beautiful, yeah. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Given that you like to <coughs> have a hack, you have a hacking mind. Yes. That would like to bypass as much discomfort as possible. Yep. How are the expression sessions for you? Because they're not meant to bypass. They are really no. like lasers into your thinking of, right. am I unhappy? Oh, and I may have to say something here. And it's, yeah. it's really uncomfortable joining. Yeah. It's like, what are you thinking yeah. right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And if it's not joy, happy, yeah. peace, then there's the opportunity to share it. Yeah. And have you found it difficult to share? And, and you know, what's your experience of that yeah. since this is kind of a new experience for, for you at this point? Right, yeah. Well, it's actually butt naked uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uncomfortable yep. sometimes, yeah. Um, a miracle happened, and I, I, I was aware of it a couple of days ago. So when I first came, um, I had the belief that I'm an empath. You know what that means, yes. right? So yes. Because again, studying human nature, always trying to mirror their feelings and stuff. Um, and it was very uncomfortable. I actually mentioned at some point to Jason when he was here that what do I do with this? I mean, everybody's crying here. Do I really want to be here? I mean, this doesn't feel like a joyous place. Like, really. <laughs> there are days. Yeah, there are days, yeah. So, um, I mean, it was really uncomfortable because I was kind of like mirroring their, uh, the other people's right. Uh, stuff, right? And it was really uncomfortable. And a couple of days, uh, I don't know, three, four days ago, something like that, I just found myself in this place of peace where I was just like watching, right, other people's expression sessions, <laughs> right? And I, I didn't feel anything, right? That's beautiful. I mean, it's not, it's not either love, it's not either fear, it's just like being that, uh, in that observer mode. And right. I didn't do it, but <laughs> I just had the experiences that is, that's possible, right? Just to be, to hold, to hold that space, yeah. That's, that's a big miracle, because when I first came, it was like, I'm never going to be able to just be comfortable in this, this environment. I yeah. mean, how, how could you, right? <laughs> because crying is bad. Right. Obviously, right? <laughs> well, I didn't come from that particular slant, but, right. but you, yeah, but you know, you raise something here. You're mm. a man. Mm. In, in form, you mm. look as a man. And the, a lot of these expressions, I mean, as a woman, I think we're raised a little bit differently that somehow expressing feelings mm -hmm. isn't as difficult as it is for men. Right. It's like, and, and I would love for you to give your. Right. your Right, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. But the thing that um, um, motivates me every time is that every time I uh, um, f find the balls to do it, I get a big, big reward. Yeah. And an out of this world kind of reward, which I never got it, and, it, and it's an experience that the world can't give me, right? And that just kind of like motivates me to, to go past, past that fear and even if my knees are trembling just go towards fuck it I'm gonna do it right yeah and it's it's not pretty obviously <laughs> but again it's so worth it so worth it yeah every, every time kind of like a big chunk falls out of me that I didn't want <laughs> you know I, I, I just want to share to the people that might be seeing this because we're talking about expression sessions and mm -hmm. I, I shared a little bit of mine the last program um, when the expression session is happening mm -hmm. and you probably can relate to this too mm. Um, if your heart starts beating yeah. and you feel like you can't breathe <laughs> yeah, that's it. and your toes are tingling <laughs> and you yeah. don't want to, everything yeah. in your body is saying keep your mouth shut, just yeah. get through this yeah. and then go into the pool and scream under the water or something like yeah. that. That's when a feeling is starting to surface and that's what the expression sessions are really, yeah. you know, the space to allow up. But in that process, it feels like someone has just slammed your head into a brick wall. And that's really how it feels just before the feelings come out. Right. And right. once the feelings, and you alluded to this, once you are allowing those feelings up, 
There is such <clears throat> bliss and peace yeah. on the other side of it. Yeah. I know, I think it's in the book, and <clears throat> I could be mis I often misquote the book, but it says that if once you allow an expression up, mm -hmm. just in that allowance, it disappears into a puff of nothing. Yep. And it really is, and it's, I want to say it's even better than that, because yep. there is this bliss that goes along with it, like, yeah. I survived. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all smoke and mirrors. It was all smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. And all that heart pounding mm -hmm. and the sweating and mm -hmm. the I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna yeah. disappears. Yeah. And it's kind of like it never existed before. It's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. And there's a, for me at least, it gives me one of the things that I crave the most, which is stability in my mind. And that kind of comes immediately mm. after that, like a sense of like stability and peace and everything just settles, which is, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's what I want the most. You know, I, I wish we could bottle this. Right. Maybe we will. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Don't limit ourselves. Mm. But it's kind of like whatever this experience is, and all I can say is this is an experience that we've all had. Anyone living in community can, can, can relate their version of it. Mm. Um, what triggers it is very different for everybody, but the essence of releasing it appears to be the same because you yeah. get to the it's bliss for no apparent reason it's yeah. it's peace for no apparent reason yeah. it's just okay you yeah. know i let yeah. it fly whatever that yeah. was i swore yeah. i cried whatever came up yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like ah yeah. you know it's like having having a cigarette after great sex it's like <laughs> well that was nice <laughs> yeah yeah and it's kind of like it's happiness 2.0, yeah. like it's without a reason behind it. Yeah. Right? So you're happy without the cigarette and sex. Right. Right. Which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 And it's hard to describe to other people, and it that's is. a partly why I wanted you on it because is. it's like you're another body with a different story, hmm. but the train, the mind training is the same. Yep. You know, there's only one solution. Many different yeah. pro problems, and we yeah. all come in with whatever yeah. our stories are and our yeah. our histories are, and yeah. but the solution is exactly the same. That w that was another thing that just blew me away. Um, like when you read, we are all one mind. I mean, cute. It's a nice thing yeah. to read. Cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Um, feels good in in sentiment. How the course is right. Feels good in sentiment. But um, actually seeing it in in real time so when we do these expression sessions like actually hearing your mind speaking through other people's mouths like and it's just the same problems and not only the same problems but every week is a theme that's <laughs> another mind blower like every week seems to be a thing that runs runs across the whole collective mind exactly like what yeah so that's pretty trippy and, it, and it's not just problems that the theme of, you know, whatever fear is coming up. Mm. There's also moments where everyone's in joy. Yes. Or everyone's yes. into, you know, oh my yes. God, I had an aha moment. Or yes. I, it's, it's just yes. fascinating. Yes. You know, oh God, this is probably totally inappropriate to say on air, but that's never stopped me. You know, it's like mm. a bunch of women that get together, mm -hmm. they start cycling. The same at the same time as far mm -hmm. as having their menstrual cycle right, and right, it's right. kind of like why how does that happen we don't know right. but it feels like the same thing that's happening in the expression sessions it sure it, there's themes that run through i mean yeah. like today there were rules for decision the past couple of days rules yep. for decisions been up yep. and then i'm moderating the 30-day group the same thing's happening there yep. they're yep. kind of lining up with us it's like yep. oh my yep. god this is trippy yeah, that's actually having the experience of we are all one mind, right. rather than just reading it in a book, which is important. <laughs> yeah. but, I've even given that up. I don't even care what the book says. I right. don't even read the text anymore, right. Right. because I'm more fascinated what's going on in these rooms yeah. Yeah. with all of us. Yeah. And then we go off in our day in different directions, and we come mm. back in, yeah. we're all on the same page still. Yeah. 
in our minds. Yeah. Even though some have been out in the community, other have been yeah. in different projects with different yeah. people. Yeah. But when we share, we're sharing from the same headspace. It's like, it's been a day full of miracles, or oh my yeah. God, I'm, it feels like I'm being slammed every time I'm turning yeah. around with yeah. my mind. And we're all kind of in that same bubble. Mm -hmm. And we're breaking through it together. Yeah. Which is yeah. just, Fascinating. Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, maybe you could just share a little bit about your story as far as how you got here. You know, where are you from? Um, so I'm from Romania, Eastern Europe. I lived in a communist kind of like environment when I was young, um, mm. which was uh, very nourishing in terms of lessons and <laughs> going <laughs> inward <laughs> when, when the external is uh, not pretty you tend to go inward and that mm. helped me. So how did you get around to even finding out about living miracles? Right, um, again because I was like a human nature uh, aficionado, <laughs> right, I've always, I, I never was a reader, I started reading very very late in my life so I started like with psychology and self-help and personal development. But one of the triggers was um, I had my first anxiety attack, which I was, uh, I was a lot into weed and I smoked a lot of weed and I think weed helped it, I don't know, whatever. It just I had a panic attack and I was, I really, really realized how my mind is not my friend. Mm. I really saw it like, wow, this thing that rests in my mind is, does, really not what my, it's not in my best interest. Yeah. So I kind of like saw that. And, and then I came back to, to Eckhart Tolle because he started me. And then Tolle miraculously enough mentioned The Course in Miracles. And then I remember, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's and do this. then you came into community after that? Yes, and I applied for, I applied for the community. Yeah, um, um, I, I had a call with Michael at some point and he said like, mm, I kind of felt like you're not the one kiddo. And then kind of like the next days, two, three days, they called me and they paid for my, 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 plane, my plane ticket and I was here. That's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. having the courage to, to, to not know and just to, just to jump, <laughs> jump. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the courage to change yeah. our minds. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's, there's something in that whole generation, millennial, call it millennial yeah. mind, that doesn't see, can see the mind, number one, as an entity that might even need to be investigated. Mm. Um, and I never had that. I mean, I, yeah, this is just who I am. So right. maybe you could say something more about um, how you think. Right. Well, how I see the, mil the millennial mindset, at least my mindset, how it was, it was like I always had this non-confrontational idea really stuck in my mind. So I never understood anger and, 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 and conflict and stuff like that. So it was like very alien to me, like that doesn't make any sense. So that's one. But let me uh, um, kind of like use like a metaphor from psychology. I don't know if it's helpful. I hope it is. Um, so it's kind of like the alphas who are kind of like destined to lead, right? They, they don't like doing anything other than leading, right? It's, it's kind of like patterns, right? I don't know, Jung did it, whoever mm -hmm. did it. And then there was the betas who just love following, right? So mm -hmm. there's kind of like two, two bunches. And then there's the sigmas who kind of like can be in the leader role, but they don't really care about being a leader. Ah. They're, they're best for being consultants or stuff like that. They're kind of like, meh, I can be a leader, I can be a follower, I can be whatever I want. So kind of like that looseness of identity, like huh. I don't care being successful in this world. I just want to be. And do you be. think the millennials are more in that? Yeah, I think they're more loose that's that way. Yeah, interesting. they're not. They're not very attracted into proving themselves. That idea of I'm going to make it in the world and I'm going to be somebody. They're more like loose, more like well, I'm just going to have fun and see whatever comes in. And that's yeah. really interesting because I know Jackie said something to me the other day about how those of us that came through the 60s mm. were actually a bridge for this m millennial mindset that's happening right now. Mm. Now, we failed miserably, you know, <laughs> we had great music, but it's like we kind of took off 
in a flurry and then got caught in the sex, drugs, rock and roll thing right. and then came back to, okay, I guess it's time to make a living, you know? Right. And we were definitely alphas or betas. There was mm -hmm. no other, you know, we were either an alpha or a beta and we mm -hmm. kind of found our niche and just mm -hmm. carried on. Now you see this millennial mindset is yeah. what was the third category you said again? Sigmas. S Sigmas. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. They're very, they can be leaders. They can be very outstanding leaders. But it's not their but they don't priority. Care. Yeah, they don't right. care about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to be a leader. Well, fine. <laughs> they don't build that identity out of it. Yeah. yeah. Or I can be a bum for a couple of times. Yeah, okay, I'm going to be a bum. So. Well, you know, <laughs> it's funny you should say that because I, I look at my niece and nephews as far mm. as their choices that they've made. Mm. And what I, I love my brother. He, 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 it drives him nuts. None of them have steady jobs. None of them have careers. None yeah. of them went to school. Yeah. They're all kind of like, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. And it's yeah. this mindset of, yeah. I'll make do. Yeah. But it's not really just, yeah, whatever. Because, yeah, whatever into apathy. Not, yeah, whatever into well, apathy. Yeah. It's, yeah, whatever I don't care about um, identity. But I care about what my activities are. So I want to have fun. I want to I experience life. But I'm, I'm not interested in the masks and the roles. Right. So I, I think they come with that, like, a natural mindset for them, like, if you say, if you talk to them about masks and identities, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> None yeah. of them have any, what's the word, motivation right. to yeah. get ahead or yeah. do something with their lives. It's like, yeah. that's not how they're hardwired. Yeah. They're just like, kind of, I mean, they have more resignation than what you have. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, those that get into this community, somehow rise above resignation to go there's mm -hmm. got to be another way yeah kind of like what Helen said yeah and so you know you don't have that resignation or at least yeah. I don't get that yeah. from you yeah but I got it so <laughs> yeah. I found out that it's not it so I kind of had to to right to yeah get past it because immediately the, the most natural thing is to go into apathy I don't need to do anything I'm just gonna smoke weed all day so there's no right there's no future there's no past but you learn it fast that it's not it. So. Well, I'm so grateful you came on the show, and I just love you in the community so yes. deeply. Thank you. And thank you. Just thank you for keeping your open mind and yes. heart. Yeah, this was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say goodbye to all of my our devoted viewers and. Uh, uh, there will be a lot of links for living miracles. I'm not even sure what all we covered. Uh, remote volunteers, if you feel up to that. I'll put a lot of links in, in the notes, the comments section. So you can, you know, perhaps join with us in whatever way your heart is uh, leaning, leading you. So for today, I thank you, Andre, for being on the show. and. Bye-bye, everybody. Until next week, this is Calico for Beyond the Body. It was just a tiny mad idea At which the son of God